Some of the biggest acquisition battles of 2021 involved nickel. Our next guest is advancing his own Baptiste project in northern BC, focused on the same metal. Martin Turen is CEO of FPX Nickel. Martin, welcome back. Nice to see you, Michael, as always. Now, in 2021, really must have been a watershed year for nickel. There was a Sabania Stillwater, which beat out rivals in a $1 billion bid for a Brazilian nickel project. We also had the uh, headlines coming out of Wailu and BHP that were fighting over Naranth uh, until Wailu prevailed. Um, 2021, it was a big year, Martin. Yeah, it really was, you know, and I, I think back even to that um, Sabanye deal with uh, Appian, which is having some issues in terms of closing right now as being really a, 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 a bit of a, a bit of a, um, uh, a milestone in the nickel business, in particular in that, you know, there was some press around the time that that came out, whereby the seller of that asset, Appian, confirmed that they had actually received bids on the asset from automotive uh, OEMs. And that is something that I would not have expected to see at, at this point. But I think it's a real indicator that the car companies out there uh, have real concern over their security of supply of raw materials, nickel included. To, so to see them thinking about making major upstream investments, you know, that was a billion dollar plus deal to acquire nickel assets and to get into the mining industry. Um, that's, a, that's a pretty big milestone, I think, for the nickel industry. Uh, thumbnail uh, FPX is Baptiste for us, uh, Martin. Yeah, so FPX is a Vancouver-based company. We trade on the Venture Exchange in Canada and on, on the OTCQB in the U.S. And we're focused on uh, the development of one of the largest nickel deposits in the world. In fact, uh, our Baptiste deposit is, is the third largest undeveloped nickel deposit uh, out there. It contains over 7 billion pounds of nickel. Uh, we've completed a PEA on that. We're moving into the early stages of a preliminary feasibility study, and we would envision having uh, an operation here that could be in production before the end of the decade. You just announced a scoping study. Why? Yeah, we had completed a PEA, preliminary economic assessment, a couple of years ago on this. This scoping study is an internal study looking at the ability that we see to take our nickel concentrate from this project in British Columbia and feed it directly into the EV battery market. So we produce a very high grade uh, nickel concentrate around 60% nickel or more as compared to most nickel concentrates, which range from 10 to 15% nickel. And our concentrate is also very clean. It allows us to bypass smelting and to produce a battery suitable nickel chemical in a, in a reduced number of stages. So that scoping study is gonna be looking at that integration into the, uh, into the car market. Is there any fancy chemistry involved uh, with nickel and uh, using that in batteries? I kind of think of your, uh, for instance, uh, talking about uh, your lithium or your graphites, where it certainly becomes a, kind of a chemistry quiz after a while. Absolutely. Yeah, this is a key theme, I think, for the mining industry going forward is uh, the mining industry having to gain greater competency in that transition from making metal products to actually chemical products. And in some cases, that can be a whole new set of uh, skills and, and experience that is required and nickel is very much the same the nickel that sits in an ev battery is nickel in a chemical form so that the, the nickel the nickel isn't in a solid cathode or in a concentrate form and so making that transition from a solid to, to liquid or so you know physical to chemical is uh, is part and parcel of of really getting integrated into the uh, ev battery market and capturing all that value Otherwise, the mining companies, their journey will have to end at a certain point. They'll have to hand over a low value product to the chemical business. And a lot of the profits will therefore accrue to those chemical companies unless the mining companies can kind of crack that chemistry nut. Talk about uh, the uh, metallurgy and uh, why it's an overlooked uh, process. It can be expensive to process uh, nickel, Martin. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think, you know, you and I think most viewers here are very well experienced in the junior mining business. Uh, people get very focused on head grades of deposits uh, and they don't think a lot about how to actually recover the target metal out of the host rock. And that's really what metallurgy is all about. And in some cases, you can have high grade deposits, but if there's metallurgical complexity, you could have a very low margin and a high cost project. And conversely, Sometimes you can have low-grade deposits, such as what FPX has. But if there's metallurgical simplicity there, you can actually have low-cost production. And so understanding, you know, beyond just kind of head grades of deposits, 
the complexity to take nickel out of the host rock and make it into the battery suitable form is um, is 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 absolutely critical. It probably you know it involves rolling up some sleeves for for investors, but those that are willing to put in that work to to roll up their sleeves and really get an understanding of metallurgy and its impact on margin, and I, I think there's some potential opportunities to be exploited there. Uh, you said previously that uh, the uh, refining of uh, what you uh, potentially would be taking out of Baptiste uh, would have a shortened uh, level, then, and that gets back to the metallurgy and uh, what's unique about uh, what you're focused on there. Yeah, that's right. So the, the kind of the holy grail for the car companies and Elon Musk and others have talked about this is reducing the number of steps of treatment required from the mine to the battery, right? The journey to take metal out of out of host rock and put it into a form that can ultimately go into a battery is long and complicated often it involves multiple parties working in multiple different countries so you've got a nickel unit going from country a to b to c to d before it ends up in a car in country e oftentimes um, the opportunity we have with baptiste is the nickel is hosted in a very clean form one that's going to allow us to bypass some of those uh, recovery stages or refining stages rather, and really embody that idea, that holy grail concept of, of shortening the number of steps from the mine to the, to the vehicle. Talk about the nickel price. Uh, what are the nickel prices levels to watch, Martin? I mean, you know, I think if we look back the last 15 years, you've got a low in the nickel price of about $3.60 and a high of $24 a pound. So that's a huge, huge range. And it speaks to the kind of historical volatility of the nickel price. Uh, you, you can't look at any other major metal that has had that amount of volatility in its price over that span of time. So currently the nickel price is, you know, just under $11 a pound, which is, you know, uh, relatively high in terms of reaching kind of 10 year highs, but it's still less than half of that all time peak of $24 a pound. You know, we hit that that peak of twenty four dollars a pound before, you know, um, uh, you know, electric vehicles were ever on anyone's radar. Uh, so now that you've got this new source of demand from EVs, you know, I'm not suggesting that we we will hit twenty four dollars a pound or more anytime soon. But can we start to con or can we continue to move in that direction towards all time highs? I think I think the answer is clearly yes. There's a lot of conservatism in our industry. I was talking to somebody uh, just talking about uh, potentially making uh, new investments, uh, but they're sticking with gold because it's what they know and it's what they're used to. And they just uh, still um, trying to wrap their heads around battery metals. Um, what would you say to such a person? What would you say to a retail investor to uh, actually take a look at uh, you know, a space such as uh, FPX? Yeah, I'd say with gold, you know, it, it it does it does kind of always astonish me how how people are are attracted to gold and 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 how much belief they have in their own views to predict what the price of gold will be going forward. You know, gold is not really driven by basics of supply and demand. There's so many kind of esoteric uh, aspects to what moves the gold price, whereas the the movement in in uh, you know uh, base metals and other industrial commodities is pretty you know, tightly linked to supply and demand fundamentals. So really anyone could go out there and start to do some research on supply demand forecasts for industrial commodities and start to form their own view as to where the price may be heading. They may not be able to predict that price with any accuracy, but getting some sense of sort of the directional movement of a price going forward, given, you know, let's say new demand from EVs or restrictions in new capacity, given, you know, limitations on expiration spending, et cetera. I, I just think that it's easier to kind of get a sense directly where industrial metals prices are going. Um, and therefore it should give a kind of a better basis for people to make informed investment decisions as opposed to kind of betting on gold, which, you know, again, uh, I would argue harder to predict where that price is going. Uh, lastly, Martin, uh, over the next 12 months, uh, you have the scoping study uh, that's being worked on. Anything else that's going to be coming out of FPX? Yeah, really kind of a twofold focus for us. One is on kind of continued demonstration of the metallurgical recovery of our nickel products. We've played a lot of defense in the years gone past on trying to you know, justify to the market how we think that we can make economic deposits out of this Awarawite style of nickel mineralization, this unique style of mineralization we have at Baptiste. I think we're now going into a phase where we can play offense. The, the PFS level metallurgical test work that we have done and we're continuing to do will deliver, I think, positive news to the market, continue to de-risk the metallurgical aspects of the project. 
Beyond that, we're really excited about the exploration potential at a brand new discovery we made last year. So this is our van discovery, which is uh, a few kilometers away from our Baptiste deposit. As I said, Baptiste is already one of the world's largest nickel deposits. And we think what we have with van could ultimately match or exceed Baptiste in, in its grade and tonnage profile. So we'll continue to do that drilling at van and, and again, uh, hopefully have another elephant sized nickel deposit that we can show to the market. Martin, thanks for speaking with Kitco. Thanks, Michael. Appreciate it. He's Martin Turan. He is CEO and president of FPX Nickel. My name is Michael McRae and you're watching Kitco Money.